From the crossroads of the Ozarks, it's PID Radio. Welcome, I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and boy, oh boy, things happened yesterday. Oh, We'll get man. to that in a minute, but before we do, we want to remind you, download our app. Yes, the... Uh... <laughs> the app from the OGs of Christian podcasting. Oh, yeah. The old geezers. Yeah. Gilbert the House. original old ge- That's, geezers, that's the right. <laughs> PIDradio.com slash app or gilberthouse.org slash app. Go to gilberthouse.org. Everything we do is there. And uh, we've got apps for iOS, Android, Amazon, Kindle Fire. If you're watching on TV, which uh, doesn't help you much with this podcast. But if you've got the app for TV, hey, uh, we are now on Amazon Fire TV and Google TV as well. Android TV as well. So in addition to Roku and Apple TV. So uh, you've got all of those options. The reason for doing it, especially with the mobile app, is not just it bypasses the gatekeepers of big tech, but it brings you into the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, our community there with a a really growing fellowship, which is really wonderful. We've Uh, had what? 20,000 downloads of the app or more than that, maybe? I would have to check, but it's something like that. So a lot of people have downloaded the app. You won't be alone. And there are many, many, many people who have joined the conversation area. Mm -hmm. And the messaging at the top right of when Mm -hmm. you download that app, there's a little, uh, what looks like a talk bubble. Mm -hmm. And uh, that brings you into this uh, this little group, a few hundred people. Uh, All of this contained offline, so you're not uh, being subject to the ads that you get on uh, the the other places like, you know, the facey spaces. But uh, better that yet, it's it's like-minded folks who are seeking the Lord and his will and trying to go deeper into his word. Yep. And uh, we are just so grateful that you're joining us on this journey of discovery. And uh, so again, gilberthouse.org slash app to get all of that. Plus, like I said, all of our content is that's kind of a bonus contented content yes i don't know <laughs> sometimes it's discontented this is the yeah, winter of yeah. our <laughs> yeah. uh, content yes uh and and that content too Dis- and, and, yet. and yes. the other content and the other content yeah. too and eventually you're going to also get the bible's greatest mysteries yeah i'm going to start oh, uploading yeah. that this weekend uh joe artis horn has given us the uh the go bring ahead it. to uh, bring bring that back. So uh, we've actually interviewed our first guest for that. Yeah, Pastor Carl, Carl Gallops. Gallops. Yeah, was here in the barn. God bless him. Thank you, Carl, for taking time out of a busy, busy schedule. We had such fun. Spent a day with Carl. Mm-hmm. And, and the dogs uh, love him. They do. Oh, my. Carl, you're a dog guy. We can tell. And he loves was, them, too. Yeah. It's just, you know, when he got here this time, he had a suit on. Previously, yeah. they could jump all over him. He didn't care. We try yeah. to discourage jumping on guests when they come in, but, you know, the dogs, they get excited. Yeah, Grace, uh, Grace, and, and she doesn't realize how big she is. She's, you know, only 55 pounds. She's not a really, really big dog, but that's still big enough. That, when they're uh, climbing up you, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And when you get paws that are a little damp from the morning dew and <laughs> little dirt, it doesn't mix well with a, with a good suit, so... Anyway, uh, watch for that. That'll be coming, um, well, we'll settle. Probably in September. September? Early September. So that gives you a few days. I know you've got some stuff to do before you leave in a couple of weeks, which remind me, uh, just by the way, we are going to tell you at the end of this study all of the many places you can find us on the road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, App downloads all time, 24,000. Ooh, boy. change, yeah. Seriously, when we got to 1,000, I was like, what? This is another number. This is looking at the dashboard for the app now. So I'm mm-hmm. getting the analytics here. Media plays is approaching 650,000. Oh my goodness. We, we are humbled. Truly, truly are. And I'll tell you what, if you're getting something really good out of this, we'll give praise to the Lord for Amen. it. And Amen. if there's junk in there, that's us. Exactly. We're get junky. It, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get it right, it's his. If we get it wrong, that's on us. That so. is so true. Well, as you say, this week was a really interesting week for political observers Boy, all howdy. over the world. If you follow us, if you're not aware of what's going on, if you follow us on X or on Telegram, X is the old Twitter. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I've gotten used to calling it X. Yeah. I actually like it. So there. It, it took a while to get used to it, but, but now, now I do like it. it. Yeah. yeah. So if you're on X or on Telegram and you follow us, then you're well aware of what happened yesterday. But if you've been living in a cave, Mm -hmm. here it is. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump 
basically stole the thunder from the DNC, the mm-hmm. Democratic National Committee, which at convention uh, was uh, this week in Chicago, where they formally anointed Kamala Harris. But then on Friday, um, Robert F. Kennedy first. Thursday, uh, he announced it, that he was going to be speaking, give, speaking on, on Friday, Friday. Right, in, in Phoenix. And so everybody was waiting and the room was filled with media. Mm-hmm. And uh, yesterday, just after lunch, uh, 1245. Our yeah, our time. He um, announced that he was suspending his campaign and would endorse Donald Trump for president. Now, he is removing his name from ballots in only select states. Those are the battleground states, the ones that are kind of a toss up between uh, Trump and Harris mm-hmm. because internal polling. He determined from the internal polling that they were conducting that uh, his presence in the race was probably going to draw more votes away from Trump than from Harris, right. interestingly enough, because Kennedy, I mean, his name, the family name is so deeply entrenched in the history of the Democratic Party. It's huge. And he comes from an old style Democrat right. party. Right. His beliefs are far more conservative. Mm hmm than the current Democrat Party. Yeah, still to the left on certain social issues than President Trump. And in his speech, he admitted that Mm -hmm. he and Trump still are uh, in disagreement over Mm -hmm. certain certain issues. For example, I would imagine uh, abortion is one issue that... But uh, you know, he can always pray about that. Sure, sure. But but back to his announcement. His announcement. uh, So he's, he's withdrawing his name from the ballots in those battleground states. And encouraging people who would have voted for him in those states to vote for President Trump. In uh, states that are solidly Democrat or solidly Republican, I hate the red-blue thing, especially because the, the colors are reversed. Red is a communist color, and that really applies to Democrats these yeah. days. He's staying on the ballot. So if you're in California or if you're in Missouri and you were going to vote for Kennedy, go ahead and do it because it's really not going to affect the outcome. Missouri is going to go Republican. California is going to go Democrat and so on. But here's my advice. If you're truly conservative... Whether you have a D or an R Mm -hmm. in your category, if you are truly conservative and you care about children, vote for Trump. Yeah, because he, during his speech, Kennedy explained why he was doing this. Mm -hmm. He, and his speech was genuine and heartfelt. I mean, he began to cry during his speech. It was real weeping. Yeah, said that he feels a strong leading. He said, this is a spiritual journey. That's how he phrased this and mm-hmm. said this was after a lot of prayer and god bless him because his wife who was one of the stars of that show um curb your enthusiasm mm-hmm. larry david's mm-hmm. series she's very liberal mm-hmm. and does not like donald trump and most of his family has this morning disavowed him they did it within half an hour yeah. of the speech sent out you know he's he's di- doesn't speak for us yeah well they've drifted away from what Robert F. Kennedy Sr. and what John F. Kennedy stood for. Absolutely. So he believes that President Trump is on the same page when it comes to protecting our children and grandchildren from the chronic health issues that they are subject to now because of poisons in their food and in their medicines. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of toxic chemicals that are being, that are allowed in, in food here that are banned elsewhere. Uh, for example, in the European Union, a lot of the things that are allowed as, what does the FDA call FDA calls them generally regarded as safe? Yes, grass. Yeah. Which Have are- Have some grass. <laughs> are just flat out not allowed in Europe. We've noticed when we've been out of the United States on our tours of Israel and uh, in, in some cases then going to the UK or going to Italy afterwards, that we feel better after a couple of weeks of eating the food over there. Much. I can eat- Three times as much over there. Now, mind you, we're walking a lot, but still, I feel really healthy. Yeah. Even pastries over there. Mm-hmm. So clearly <laughs> the flowers don't contain some of the junk that we've got in our flower over here. Right. So that is, that is something that uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. feels very strongly about, and he feels that President Trump is in alignment with him in that regard. I mean, Kennedy's got seven children, and so he's... Well equipped with childhood diseases and mm-hmm. uh, the the perils of raising children and grandchildren these days, he reached out, and this had been previously reported by some in the media that he had uh, reached out to Kamala Harris. But the way it was phrased by the corporate media, he was angling for a cabinet position, no. which made it sound like he was just interested in his own 
um, ambition. They were trying to uh, essentially derail him, marginalize him before right, the fact. Right. And as it happened, Harris wouldn't even take his phone call. Trump not only took his call, but met with him personally, met with the family. And uh, Kennedy said that uh, after that meeting where they hashed out a lot of things, they realized that they're in, of one accord in, mm-hmm. in, in many of these issues. And so he, uh, again, Ro- Robert F. Kennedy, suspending his campaign and endorsing Donald Trump. So much so. And I said to you after it was all over, I said, they're both in Phoenix. I would bet the farm that he shows up at Trump's rally. Yeah. And Sharon was right because several hours later, Donald Trump, in, and there's an epic photo now of the two of them shaking hands with sparklers going off in the background. It's like, okay, that's another meme mm-hmm. photo. Like Trump, you know, with his arm raised, saying, you know, surrounded right. by Secret Service agent. You, and you could not come out with a better campaign photo if you'd staged it. You could not. And I, it's my prayer that both of those men will be guided by the Lord, mm-hmm. that they will seek him out. Because no matter who ends up in that office, we are commanded mm-hmm. to pray for them so that we may live a peaceable life. Mm-hmm. And I believe that Kennedy and Trump as well both would like for our country to be safe and peaceful. Yeah, that's the other aspect is that uh, Kennedy made a point of emphasizing the forever wars, Mm -hmm. especially the war in Ukraine, where he said the flower of Ukrainian youth, as many as perhaps 600,000 Ukrainian young men have died in this war and more than 100,000 Russians. War that did not need to happen. And he said, you know, and we, we will echo this. We're not carrying any water for Vladimir Putin for invading Ukraine. But the fact is that NATO, pushed by the neocons in Washington, D.C., have continuously lied, broken promises, unilaterally mm-hmm. withdrew from two medium range nuclear weapons treaties. And surrounded him. And surrounded Russia by expanding NATO right up to the Russian border. Mm-hmm. These are hostile acts. We would respond, the United States would respond the same way if Mexico were suddenly to enter into a military alliance with Russia or China. The late Jack Kennedy Mm -hmm. did respond that way. Exactly. When Russia was trying to put missiles in Cuba. Nuclear tipped missiles. Right. Exactly. Almost went to World War Mm -hmm. III. I was just barely born. (laughs) I was less than a year old when this happened. I remember it well. Yeah. The missiles of October of 1962, that was a big deal. Yeah. As a sixth grader. Sure. I yeah. was I was mimicking because we all heard that uh, Khrushchev mm-hmm. said he would bury the United States. Right. And right. he did so by taking his shoe off and banging it on the table. Using so his it like kids, a gavel. We were all, you know, saying, yay for Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Not really understanding what was at stake. Not really. Our parents, no. I'm sure, were... were Terrified and not having the internet to follow up on the latest rumors or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, waiting on the nightly news for uh, Huntley and Brinkley or Walter Cronkite or whoever was uh, on the air in 1962 to bring yep. the news. So Kennedy, like Trump, wants to end the war in Ukraine. It's a pointless war. Ukraine has already lost. The one division that it sent into Kursk is it's Battle of the Bulge moment, as we discussed last week. When you look at World War II, the Germans fought a massive tank battle in and around Kursk. They had a lot more manpower, uh, I think five divisions, that were overwhelmed by the Russians. The Russians have like a third more population than they did back in 1943 or whenever that battle was fought. So um, the one Ukrainian division that made this incursion into near the town of Kursk, it was never going to succeed. It was nothing more than... Uh, you know, showing the West, hey, keep sending us money because we're we're not dead yet. No, but, I would highly recommend that you, because it's available on YouTube, and I've shared it the the actual full press conference with with uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Mm-hmm. explaining all of these things. It's really worth watching. So worth watching. Talking not only about saving our children from from chronic disease, from war, constant war, mm-hmm. but also from losing their freedoms. The freedom of speech. The censorship industrial complex. He used that phrase. He did. And he's right because out of the Department of Homeland Security, they keep changing the name of the offices, but they've never really given up on the idea of total information awareness that we were talking about on PID Radio years ago. I know. It just changed its name. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, It's essentially the Ministry of Truth. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you've never read Orwell's 1984, you need to read it. Yeah. Us, he was sadly, just off by a few years, but few, there are elements yeah. within our government and in the UK that are taking it as a guidance, a, a, a an instruction manual instead of a warning. Oh my gosh, Keir Starmer, <laughs> he's arresting the the wrong people. Mm-hmm. The people that have committed really heinous acts, felonies are being released from prison very early. Mm -hmm. And those people who do nothing more than try to stand up for the rights of their children are arrested. Yeah, there is a, um, there was a a law that was passed. And I just want to say one more thing about Kennedy's speech. I don't think it's exaggerating to say that uh, Kennedy's speech yesterday was the most substantial, I mean, in terms of actual Mm -hmm. policy substance than any political speech I've heard in probably in my lifetime. It's old style Democrat, old Scott, old style Republican. Right, That's right. the way speeches were given when I was very young. They contained a lot of aspects to the, the belief system, the planks mm-hmm. of the platform on which that person stood. That's sort of given way to Hopey, changey. Well, it, it, and it, joy. It's yeah. It's given way What's to what we. This thing of joy. I don't know. They're trying to find some way of uh, selling the vibe of Kamala Harris because there's no substance. Selling the vibe with a one or two word slogan, right, just right. like someone else used. Hope and change, yeah. right? Yeah. What all we saw from the the, the Democrats this, this past week was um, Donald Trump is a racist. Trump, 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 Trump. It was just, I've seen some super cuts, mm-hmm. video super cuts of the, the speakers. That, Trump, 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 Trump. Barack Obama, Barack Obama demeaned himself by resorting to locker room humor to insult Donald Trump. This should have been below, beneath the dignity of a former president of the United States to tell a hmm, joke at the expense of Donald Trump. I, I don't care how you, it's like, are have, you, you, have you seen John Stewart's latest? latest uh, I have not. I've not. I've seen the headlines. You need to watch it. I, 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 I will. And, and Michelle Obama basically calling him a racist. Mm-hmm. Between the, He's a racist, he's a misogynist, and he's inadequate. Let, let's put it that way. And then you have Robert F. Kennedy come out Friday afternoon and deliver this impassioned speech about, we need to love our children. I love this line. This almost brought me to tears. We need to love our children more than we hate each other. Yes. Unity. Yeah. That was the theme of his moment with Trump. Unity. Yeah. Yeah. And so when they came out, uh, the, the Trump rally crowd went bananas. They did. And uh, Trump announced that he would have Kennedy chair a commission to find out what really happened to John and Bobby. Yes. Like, Whoa. Oh, that's big. <clears throat> that is the last thing certain elements. Certain three letter agencies. Yep. Cigarette smoking man. Doesn't want you <laughs> if you've ever seen the X Files. You yeah, know yeah. About. Um the the speeches that they gave on Friday, they well, they've did done two things. Number one, it certainly stole the momentum away from the Democrats. Mm-hmm. Who okay, conventions, political conventions are dog and pony shows. They are theater. I, I get that. And the same holds true for the Republican Party. It was theater. Mm-hmm. But what Trump and Kennedy did was they stole the momentum. They stole the news cycle from the Democrats. But secondly, and this is far more serious, by announcing that, okay, we're going to stand up against Big Pharma. And uh, I don't even know how many vaccines are recommended for children, uh, infants anymore these days. Oh, I, gosh. I think I had like six Looking at my medical record, our daughter had about 22. I may have had three or four, maybe. I I know that it was over 40 the last time I checked. I did not get chicken pox. I did not get measles vaccines because they, you just got the disease when you were a kid, when I was little. Smallpox, that I do remember. So, so there's that. There's also opposing. Oh, and uh, polio. Polio. Yeah. Uh, There is uh, standing in opposition to big food, if you Mm -hmm. will, and the chemicals that they put into food to make food, ultra processed foods addictive which is why it's so hard to give up some of these junk foods that we get, we get hooked on. Exactly. In fact, Kennedy, um, he, he implied that he has seen proof. Yes. He's got the receipts, so to speak. Right. For making that claim. So you're going against um, big pharma, big food, and the military intelligence 
industrial complex. It's huge. It's huge. And I pray that Donald Trump makes sure that someone is protecting RFK Jr. Right. That, and that was my point, because mm-hmm. the two of them have now come out and said, we're going to stop the gravy train. Mm-hmm. We've just the put American... targets on our backs. Exactly. Right? So pray for the protection of Donald Trump. Please do. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and their families, because Mm -hmm. uh, we we know already that as of July 13th, President Trump was not being adequately protected. And Kennedy was denied Secret Service protection altogether by the Biden administration until Trump shamed them into it. Mm -hmm. But what's the quality of the protection that those two men are getting? We pray for their protection. We do. I'm going to go left. Did well, you I was, need to go? was just going to come back to Keir Starmer because we started oh, down that do. throat. Okay, we'll do Keir yeah. and then I'm going to take a left jump. Because uh, this is uh, coming here to the United States. Yes. The, In fact, they may want to extradite someone who says things against. Well, their- well yeah. I just, the, in fact, the uh, was the commissioner of the Metro- superintendent yeah. of Metropolitan Police, yeah. police uh, Scotland Yard, said he wanted to extradite people in other countries who say things on social media that they don't like. Uh, but there, there was a law that was passed by Parliament last year to ban silent prayer outside abortion clinics, yes. except for certain exclu- So there's like a 150 meter, that's about a 500 foot uh, barrier, mm-hmm. a border around um, these, these clinics where you can't even go and just stand there and silently pray. And Thought they want crime. to expand it. Right. Um, well, no, it's not that they want to expand it, it's they want to start enforcing it because under uh, Sunni... Uh, the one I threw you. Sadiq Khan? No, no, no. The the private the previous prime minister. <laughs> Why am I forgetting oh, his name? Oh. Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak. I was thinking Sunni. He's so forgettable. Sunni, yeah. Rishi Sunak, yeah. It wasn't being Short enforced. Pissed. It wasn't being enforced. The Tories weren't uh, enforcing it, but Starmer is going to begin enforcing that law. So thought crime will soon become a uh, a crime there, but it's already here because this week in Michigan, a group of pro-life activists including an 89-year-old woman who survived one of the concentration camps of Marshal Tito in Mm -hmm. Yugoslavia, were convicted of violating the FACE Act, which is the Free Access to Clinical Entrances Act. If they determine that you are somehow obstructing or even um, uh, hindering access to a clinic, you can be arrested, and they face more than 10 years in prison for this. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Now, you go to the Department of uh, Justice website, and uh, it's page for the face access. Now, this is not about uh, protecting access to abortions. Yes, it is. You're not protecting because, access anywhere else. Because you don't see people outside my doctor's office protesting. How dare you go in there and get treated for your aching knee? Exactly. But I'm betting that if uh, you know someone who doesn't agree with the way I practice you know, my faith mm-hmm. wants to stand outside my church and block access to oh, the well, door. Oh, well, that's First Amendment. Or you can, you can block traffic. Blocking traffic is fine. It's fine. And you're not even doing it silently. You're yeah. just blocking traffic. I'm sorry. I know you're, you say your wife is in the car and she's about to have a baby and it's an emergency. Too bad. I've got to stop oil. We're, we're saving the planet. That's more important than your mm-hmm. child and your wife. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So that, that kind of thought crime prosecution is already here. And again, that's one of the things that uh, Robert F. Kennedy was right. uh, and, and again, I'll talking say, about. read 1984. Yep. Read 1984. Well, my left turn, jump to the left, is something unexpected. Oh. Well, you know, and it's not. The, There's that uh, spice. I know, mm. I know. And it's not the Spanish Inquisition. Although that is unexpected. Um, you know, I often fo- follow stories about emerging diseases mm-hmm. or diseases that are changing. Tularemia, mm. which is one of six bioterror listed diseases mm-hmm. and is usually something hunters have to worry about because it is often carried as endemic within rabbit populations. So if you are cleaning a rabbit, you can contract tularemia and it is very dangerous a woman biologist has contracted tularemia from a seal it is the first known case of a marine animal ever being infected Mm -hmm. with tularemia Hmm. yeah it's one of six high priority bioterrorism agents 
it was, by the way, where, where did one of the diseases. Um, it was in the MMW R, R report. It was uh, Washington, state of Washington. Okay. Um, this happened last year mm-hmm. in a necropsy, a necropsy, which is an autopsy, essentially, of an animal, determined that the animal had died from tularemia. Tularemia is, was, and probably still is, one of the biological agents that was experimented upon in, that, uh, in, in... Vector? The, in, well, yes, I think it was called Vector now, but it used to be called Biopreparat, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was the Russian form of uh, our Fort Dietrich. Mm. And what was the name of the... Um, gosh. Um, oh, it'll, yeah. it'll come to me. The guy I mean, who exposed yeah, it. Exactly, wrote, yeah, exactly. In the bioterrorism book. I'll find it because mm-hmm. it's in my Kindle. Um, he talked about how that was one of the agents that they were trying to make worse and trying to make it so communicable that it would be in multiple populations, not just in rabbits mm-hmm. and the like. Mm-hmm. The odds of the average person contracting it are pretty low. But if it starts to spread amongst other mammals, much like H5N1 has, then it begs the question, why has it jumped? Yeah, has it been tweaked? Don't know. Ken Alebeck. Ken Alebeck, thank you very much. Actually, that's not his real name. No, that's an anglicized form, Mm. yep. Um, Hmm. Yeah. Yep. As much as we would like to think that bio-warfare and chemical warfare are things of the past, Mm, the militaries of the world are still experimenting with this mm-hmm. stuff. Very much yeah. so. In fact, yeah. at Biopreparat, they were experimenting with putting the uh, agents of warfare, the bio agents, into a nose cone and putting it, shooting it in a missile. Mm-hmm. Others were, can we spray it from a balloon as it floats over the country? Mm. Remember the Chinese balloon? Right. Yeah. U.S. government did those experiments in, uh, in St. Louis was one of the places they did that test. But in they've the also sub- done it in New York subway, New York City subway. subway. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, well, we're just, it's a very mild agent. Well, it's just enough that we can track so we know if someone ever does do this. How it will spread. Yeah. 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 So there, there are things going on in the world that are suspect. Mm-hmm. And I would love for someone like Robert F. Kennedy Jr., to be in charge of an agency that looks into this and many others. Yeah. I think as Christians, we need to step back, though, and just remember, as exciting as this is, especially if you're a baby boomer, which both of us are, I'm, I'm sort oh, of at you the mean tail Kennedy? end. Yeah, at, at seeing a Kennedy, especially one who breaks with the Democratic Party to, he's the first Kennedy ever to endorse a Republican candidate for president. I know. So that's a big deal. And you can see why the family wanting to stay connected to the levers of power and play ball with the deep state or disavowing what Kennedy's doing. But he seems to be a man of genuine principle. But even if Trump wins in November, and there's some early polling numbers that suggest that in swing states, Kennedy's decision is making a decision, is making a a difference, I should say. He was polling 4 to 5% in some of these states. And if that 4 or 5% even if most of it goes to Trump, that, that could make the difference in the election. But even if Trump wins and if he follows through and appoints Kennedy to a position where he has the power to investigate these things, that's not going to save us from no. the deep state or what's to come. We let our, our salvation comes through one name alone, and that is Jesus Christ. And that is the thing we need to remember. Amen to that. What I do think, and I pray that this is what's going on, my glasses are blinging. That uh, that the Lord may be giving us another grace period. Right, um, Donald Trump. He's he's a flawed human, as are we all. But uh, he did oversee an administration that was uh, at least staying out of the way of churches mm-hmm. and Christians and our ability to proclaim our faith in the public square. The other party seems to be moving towards a, a, a consensus that certain speech is hateful and hate speech is dangerous and thus must be controlled. And that's why they were openly trying to censor 
things in the name of public health emergencies during mm-hmm. the pandemic, but that will rapidly ex- expand as government always does. <laughs> it uh, the mission creeps and they uh, start saying, well, you know, these religious beliefs which encourage children to hate people who are different that needs to be suppressed as well. So while a, a Trump second Trump administration would give us a reprieve, let's just view it as that we we are not going to see. Or achieve salvation at the ballot box. No, we will not. Yeah. Break. Well, things, yes, things to talk about in the second half. Uh, BRICS is reco- is is attracting new members. Yes, we're, we need to talk about BRICS. And uh, I've got something about a boar. Oh. I want to get boring. Is it a boar war? Boar war, yeah. possibly. Also want to talk about the hundreds of thousands of missing children. That's another in the thing. United States. That, and in fact... Trump mentioned it in his speech last night. Ah, good for him. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a big, big deal, and this should be a national shame, should be a national priority. And we'll tell you what we're talking about when PID Radio continues. Archaeologists call it the world's oldest temple, Gobekli Tepe. But who were the guardians of Gobekli? I love that title. In fact, it's the title of Dr. Aaron Judkin's book, and he gets into that information. He is one of the world experts on Gobekli Tepe. There aren't very many of them. There aren't, and he's one of the few who will take a Christian look at Gobekli Tepe and try to analyze the spiritual forces behind this mysterious site. Why did our Stone Age ancestors spend so much time building this specifically for ritual purposes? And then burying it. And then burying it. It is a message in stone. And I tell you what, hundreds of archaeologists and experts have been trying to decipher this for a long time. I think Aaron may be onto something. Right. This is a 60-minute conversation that Aaron and I had about Gobekli Tepe. You can get it now at our special introductory price, 20% off. But this special offer is only available at our online store. What lies beneath? 20% off now at gilberthouse.org slash store. Welcome back to PID Radio. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert. And if you're wondering if we're going to Israel in November and next spring, yes, we are. We have not yet changed our minds on that. No, we have not. Uh, November 6th through 13th, our solidarity mission. I'm seeing that there's a group from uh, Canada now planning a solidarity mission. Same name. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Not with the Lipkins, as far as I know. Well, they need to go regardless. But they're using the same title, right? Yes, please do. So they're also looking at November. But uh, the point is this. We are not afraid. We're going to go and we're going to bear witness to what happened last October 7th and show you why Israel is doing what it's doing and also show the people of Israel that there are those of us on this side of the planet who understand what's going on, understand that this is a supernatural war that is taking place for control of God's Mount of Assembly, mm-hmm. Zion, um, We basically to show the love of Christ. We're, we're not going to evangelize that. In the Jewish culture, that's kind of a sore spot. Mm. And so it's it's kind of frowned upon. But we, if we show, look, we're Christians, we love Israel, we love the people of Israel, it plants seeds. They think, hey, they're not the way I was told that they are. Right. Behold really how they big, love one another and how they're loving on us. Yes. In fact, when we went there in, Mar- in May, mm. was it May or March? It was, it was March. No, no, it was, it was May. May. Boy. I know, Ooh. we've been there a number of times. Anyway, went in May and... Uh, there were people who were literally, I, I think, surprised that we were there. Why are you here? And when they mm-hmm. told them, there were some people actually began to cry. But they, here, can we take a picture? Can we take it? The people of Israel, I think, are in shock that the world has turned on them so quickly after what happened to them last October. Yeah. So you can join us. This will be a small group, maybe a dozen, uh, which is great because we all get to know one another. We bond. It becomes a tight little family group. And uh, we hope to see you there. November 6th through 13th, we'll go to the south, visit the site of the Nova Music Festival, the town of Sterot, um, uh, possibly Ophakim once again. That would be lovely. uh, But other, so you can see, you know, look, here are the homes, the private Mm -hmm. homes where citizens dwell. This is not a military base. This is a private dwelling with bullet holes all up and down the walls. We have also asked the Lipkins if we can go to Shiloh. Yeah. And they have said yes. Mm-hmm. We've gone there previously on our big tours, and we didn't know if it was one of those places that, that was considered off limits now, but 
it is not, so we get to go. Mm-hmm. So you can find out more at our website, gilberthouse.org slash travel. And of course, next spring, we're still looking forward to the Iron and Myth Tour uh, featuring two of the three uh, guys that I have with me once a month on the Iron and Myth Roundtable. Doug Van Dorn, Dr. Judd Burton, and Timothy Alberino playing the role of Brian Godawa. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is... He's like us. He's kind of a homebody. Doesn't like to travel much. I know. But, if uh, it weren't for this love of Israel, I I would be. I'm such a homebody. <laughs> you and me both. So uh, you can find out more about that tour. And that one, we pray, will be peaceful enough that we can visit all of the places we would normally see, including Gilgal Rephaim, the the Gates of Hell, Caesarea Philippi, mm-hmm. and uh, much more. And all of that is at uh, GilbertHouse.org slash travel it is indeed and if you are wondering if we're still planning to go to turkey afterwards next spring probably not yeah that is probably off the table we found that uh, our original plan because already being on that side of the ocean flying from tel aviv to ankara would be inexpensive yeah but they're saying "Eh, flying to turkey from israel right now is not really you you can do it you got to go through another spot first fly to a different country first yeah fly to rome and then go to turkey or whatever but uh, probably off the table, we may do a separate tour of Turkey at some point mm-hmm. in the future. Uh, we're going to see Doug Hershey in December at uh, the Prophecy Watchers Conference that we'll tell you about at the end of the program. And uh, maybe we can work something out with Doug because it's his tour company that we were planning to use. Yes, Mrs. G? Oh, thank you very much for calling on me, Mr. Gilbert. You're very cute. Um, I was just thinking that since we're talking Turkey, mm-hmm. I would like to bring up my boar conversation okay one final thing if you want to i I almost forgot about this but if you want to get an idea of what we will see on our solidarity mission oh yes the presentation that i gave based on that showing video and and images Mm -hmm. from our tour in in may wonderful is available at our streaming video site so if you go to gilberthouse.org slash video slash video uh, you can see that presentation. It's free and uh, about a one-hour presentation where you'll I kind of walk you through what we saw last uh, May or this past May, and then uh, that'll give you an idea of what we plan to do in November. Yes, okay. indeed. Now, boars. Now, by the way, boars. By the way. <laughs> Many of you know the reason what Derek and I really would like to go to Turkey, especially if we can go there with Judd Burton and perhaps even uh, Aaron Judkins. Mm-hmm. Because they are both studying Gobekli Tepe. So Derek and I would love to see Gobekli Tepe, Shanli Urfa, uh, uh, Karahan Tepe, and the many other tepes that are over there. It just Mm -hmm. means mountain or hill. A new story just came out about a brand new discovery at Gobekli Tepe. Yeah. And it is a... It's it's a statue. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it was original to the very first iteration of that temple Mm -hmm. i think many of those uh buildings were actually temples um don't know but it's very interesting it is a boar it is life size Mm -hmm. and it was painted yeah i'm looking at the picture of it right now that is uh really some amazing work yes there's still red ochre Mm -hmm. on it and you can tell they could tell the experts that it was once painted red white and and black Hmm. The age of this thing, according to scholars, is probably about 9,000 B.C. That's give or take some hundreds of years. Right. So Gobekli maybe Tepe, a little newer than Gobekli Tepe, assuming they're right about that age. Right, right. Because um, it's about 10,000? Years old. Gobekli Tepe, they date between about 9,600 and 8,200 B.C. Well, I thought it was 10,000 B.C.-ish. That's what I said when I said 10,000. Yeah, 10, ish. Uh, the wild boar statue, they date to about 9,000 B.C., according right. to the article. Yeah, so it's a little newer than what they think Gobekli Tepe is. But my point is, where they found it was on a bench mm-hmm. that had decorations along it. Whether or not the bench was a reused item, it was sitting in front of a porthole. Mm-hmm. So what yeah. was the porthole for? Was mm-hmm. this a doorway? sitting in front of a porthole, and there was a cup mark on the bench, mm-hmm. a big cup mark. And the boar statue is holding something in its front trotters. What it is, they don't know. Hmm. It's as if he is accepting an offering. Mm-hmm. That would make sense. Yeah, why, why that? Um, I, I will say this. In researching 
the, the cult of the dead around ancient Israel, which predated the arrival of the Israelites in the land in 1400 BC. Um, you find a lot of examples of uh, the sacrifice of, of boars, of pigs. There are some scholars who believe that the only reason pigs were even raised in the ancient Near East, because it was a forbidden animal, it was unclean mm-hmm. in, in other cultures besides the Israelite uh, culture, uh, it was, was to offer them as sacrifices to the dead. Very likely. And in the same area, the archaeologists have discovered a boar's jawbone. Mm-hmm. In other words, at least one boar died there mm-hmm. or was brought there after it died. Yeah. So it may have been a sacrificed animal. Also, if you look at the statue at Pozamoro, um, which is in Spain, you see that the entity to which these sacrifices are given mm-hmm. is consuming them. There are several of these demonic entities, and they look very porcine, very pig-like. Yeah, the big lower yeah. tusks yeah. and so on, yeah. So did this represent a sacrifice or did this represent a deity? Mm. Good question. Remember how many animals are carved mm-hmm. into all of the, uh, the T-shaped pillars? It's thought that they may represent astronomical points in time. Yep. That this is a building recounting history. And if so, the portals, the portholes, are even more curious. Yeah. What's on the other side of the hole? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. um, Calling Judd Burton. Yeah. Calling uh, Aaron Aaron Judkins. Judkins. And we should point out, by the way, we've got a uh, a DVD in our store, uh, What Lies Beneath. We produced it for Skywatch TV, an interview with Aaron Judkins about Gobekli Tepe Mm -hmm. and the Watcher's influence on Gobekli Tepe. Um, I just looked up Gobekli Tepe, the official estimate, um, the settlement from about 9,500 BC to about 8,000 BC, which corresponds to the time of the, what they call the pre-pottery Neolithic, meaning Mm -hmm. before they'd even invented ceramic and ceramics, they, they were building these massive structures. They've only excavated a small percentage of less than 10% of the site. is Tiny, tiny. And recently they've discovered what appear to be dwellings. Mm-hmm. So it may have been a big, um, like, cathedral sort of city, right? Where you've got big temples, and then uh, the business of taking care of the temples mm-hmm. and and providing the sacrifices, so you'd have farms and things like that. The original analysis of what had been discovered was that this was strictly a um, a ceremonial site mm-hmm. for religious purposes. But it, you're right; they've star- started. <laughs> uncovering a dwelling places. So the, the conclusions that were being reached, or at least the hypotheses that were put out there rather than conclusions were based on a, just a small sample. And as the sample, as the dig expands, Mm -hmm. they're finding that, uh, well, wait, wait a minute. Our initial analysis was not correct because now we've got to account for the fact that there are houses here in addition to the, uh, the ceremonial, the temples. It's what is just amazing though, is that the whole place was buried as big as this place is, how much work would it, did it take to move all that dirt? Ritually buried, which is what you did when you were leaving a certain area, leaving your, your, your sacred site. You did not want your enemies to come in and, and uh, uh, what is the word I want? Desecrate. Uh, desecrate it. Thank mm-hmm. you. And, and they've seen that at other places, mm-hmm. like the, the houses on uh, the back of the great, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, uh, the great serpent mound, yes. the serpent mound of Bashan. And Joshua's altar. May have been ritually it, it was. It was. So this was not a new, this would not be the first time that that's been seen. It's been seen elsewhere in the ancient Near right. East. Right. Well, another interesting thing about the bench that the boar was found on mm-hmm. is that along the side that faces the observer right. underneath, you see what appears oh. to be. Yes, I know. It's been described as waves. No. No, it's a serpent. It's a serpent. Yeah, serpent, and I'm not sure what that shape is at the the far left there. It almost I looks know. like a almost looks like a, a, a like a femur or something, a repre- yeah. representation of a leg bone. I don't but know what's what's behind it is definitely that is definitely a serpent. Mm-hmm. That is not waves. Hmm, interesting because the serpentine motif is something that you see also that you also see consistently at Gobekli Tepe and the nearby site Karahan Tepe. You know it, how interesting that I was looking at that in the the image. I watched a video about this last night. 
And I looked at that odd carving to the left, and it was described as a number of things. And it, whether or not it was original to the, you know, to, to the, the time period or someone else came along later on before it was ritually buried. Don't know, but um, yeah, I was with you. I couldn't quite figure out what it was. But if it is supposed to be represent a bone of some kind, mm -hmm. what do we see in Genesis? The serpent will bite the, the ankle, heel. The, the heel. heel, yeah. Huh. Yeah. That is weird. You know what? Almost looks like a head coming out there. Was that supposed to be a turtle, maybe? I don't know. Well, I've seen yeah. it. I, the, the, uh, the guy who was narrating the video said he thought it was a turtle. Okay. Which I think is why he thought it was waves. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But no, it looks like a serpent to me. And there are other, many other serpentine um, images and, um, well, imagery that, that is evocative. That's the word I wanted. Mm -hmm. e elsewhere in the tepees, the mini tepees. Yeah, yeah. The, the tepid tepees. The toss tepler. Yeah. The stone hills, mm -hmm. what they called. So, yeah, fascinating. And again, that all of this was done before the invention of the wheel or pottery. Exactly. And you know, another thing that I noticed, and then we can go to something else in this video, was that there was a map that he showed of the various known tepees within this time period. Mm -hmm. And it almost looked like a constellation to me. Mm. Now, mm. wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, that would be interesting. Need to take a look at that map and uh, see if that can be matched up. Yeah, I know. Doug Van Doren is really good at doing stuff like that. Doug, call him Dr. <laughs> Doug. Oh, uh, yes. Well, uh, the missing children, we really need to get that on that. Huge. That is huge. Because there's some huge. political stuff, but we've already hammered political stuff in this, this program. Um, the Department of Homeland Security earlier this week, uh, this would be Tuesday, uh, announced, right? Wednesday. Today is Saturday. Yep. Backing up in my mind, 23rd, 2nd, no, uh -huh. this was Tuesday. I was right the first time. Tuesday afternoon, Department of Homeland Security's Office of the Inspector General. So this is like an internal watchdog mm -hmm. on, on DHS. And, and remember that Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was impeached by the House of Representatives. Senate didn't convict because they don't mm -hmm. have the 60 votes, but he was impeached. First cabinet secretary since the Civil War to be impeached. Because of uh, what the estimated 11 million migrants who've crossed into the United States. More than in, that. Well, that's the ones that we know about. Yeah. It was 11 million when Obama was in office. I'm Remember saying he was going to pardon 11 million people. Yeah, but there's another 11 million that have crossed since Joe Biden took office. Oh, no, I know where you're yeah, talking, yeah. but I think it's more than double. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was talking just since Biden took office. But yeah, the total number of mm -hmm. migrants that have crossed into the country. We in the, easily in the last have 12 more, years. Yeah, easily yes. 25 million. Easily. 16 years since Obama took mm -hmm. office. Um, since 2019, according to the Inspector General at DHS, more than uh, 300,000 unaccompanied, unaccompanied minor children, children who came to the border without a parent or guardian, mm -hmm. have been released into the United States and are now unaccounted for. 300 thousand missing children okay my question how do we know the number when they came in was a record started yes here's here's from the report as of may 2024 ice immigration and customs enforcement had not served an nta that's a notice to appear or scheduled a court date for more than 291,000 unaccompanied children so these are children that they knew had come into the country and were released to somebody but we're not given a notice to appear. Into foster care? Into foster care, a guardian who claimed that they were responsible for them, um, <laughs> MS 13, child traffickers. We don't know. ICE doesn't know. 291,000. In East, each ICE location, according to the Inspector General, I, I'm quoting now from the report, in each ICE location we visited, we could not. Um, ERO, and I'm not sure what ERO stands for, I'd have to look up that acronym, could not serve NTAs on all unaccompanied children. At one location we visited, 34,823 of 41,638, that's 84% of unaccompanied children in the local area had not been served NTAs to initiate immigration proceedings. They were just let go 
and not tracked. So they don't even know where they are to follow up with them and say, okay, are you going to officially become a citizen? We don't know where they are. Oh my gosh. Without an ability to monitor the location and status of unaccompanied children, ICE has no assurance unaccompanied children are safe from trafficking, exploitation, or forced labor. Or even alive. Or even alive. I followed up on this and read another story. This, this is uh, from a press release uh, issued by the Republican Party, which, of course, wants to make hay of this. But uh, the bottom line is that ICE said that, uh, let's see, let me bring it up here because I've got it. That, uh, Both sides should be all over this. Well, yeah, because, again, this started in 2019. They're, they're tracking this from 2019, which was when Trump was in office and his Department of Homeland Security secretary was in charge. According to... Okay, at Zero Hedge, which is uh, one of the news sites, and this is from uh, or- the original news sources, headlineusa.com. More than 32,000 unaccompanied minors failed to show up for the court dates, and ICE can't account for all of them either. So 291,000 not even given court dates. Others who were given court dates just didn't show up, which means you've got over 320,000 who we just don't know about. Now, ICE has limited authority to track children and and to uh, do anything about it. According to the Inspector General, even if ICE, and I'm quoting now, even if ICE were to identify unidentified, unaccompanied children in unsafe conditions, the agency has limited authority to respond. ICE personnel at two field offices affirmed this and explained they had identified unaccompanied children in unsafe conditions, but were unable to intervene. One ICE officer expressed concern with not being able to take action in a case involving an unaccompanied child whose sponsor claimed the unaccompanied minor was in an inappropriate relationship with her husband. What? ICE does not have the legal authority to intervene and say, you're abusing this child. And so we're going to remove the child from your care. Who are these sponsors? We don't know. And yet, social services could do that with... Citizens. A citizen family. Yes. Look, you and I, this is, it, it is connected, believe me. You and I have two rescue dogs. I follow a, a page on, a number of pages on Facebook that look at dogs that are found, many of them puppies, and those puppies will either be cared for, taken into a system, fostered, find a a home. Mm -hmm. They will be chipped so we know who they belong to. Both of our dogs are chipped. Mm -hmm. I don't personally want to be chipped, but I want to know if they get out that they'll come home. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that these human children Mm -hmm are being treated more casually than puppies. Yep. Whistleblower inside HHS said that these failures are systemic um, from top to bottom. Widespread breakdowns and failures within the administration. Uh, this is so egregious that, that it must be deliberate. In fact, one whistleblower is describing this in these terms. Taxpayer-funded child slavery. Yeah. This this goes back years. I remember during the Obama administration talking about a case where migrant children had been delivered to sponsors running an egg farm in Ohio and were working in essentially slave conditions, slave yeah. labor conditions. So this has been ongoing for years. It's not just the Biden administration. This goes back years. There are, in in two cases here. The inspector general found the children were delivered to homes sponsors who had ties to MS-13, the Mm. El Salvadoran gang. Exceptionally brutal. And there are more brutal gangs that are in the U.S. now. Yeah, trend or Wagwa. Venezuela, yeah. Yep. So this this should be a priority, and I'm very glad to hear, because I didn't watch uh, Trump's speech last night. I was uh, doing other stuff that needed doing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that he brought up this incident, because this is huge, and... The president, President Trump, that is, should focus on this as a priority for his next administration. And I think if he hammers this, where are the missing children? Especially given that that Kamala Harris was designated the border czar as much as the corporate media is now trying to walk that back. 
oh, that never happened, even though they were the ones reported it at the time. Yes. She was put in charge of stopping this. Where are these children? Why has Homeland Security let these children go? The inspector general said there need to be changes to give ICE the authority to intervene in these cases. Why are hundreds of thousands of unaccompanied children being released into the United States to sponsors who've not been vetted? It's because somebody's making money on this. This is it's one of the reasons. It's always follow the money. It, it, it is absolutely. This is one of the reasons that Whispering Ponies Ranch, that Joe Horn mm-hmm. has taken this on as such a personal cause. There is a forthcoming docu-series from Defender Investigative Films called Rescue Us. Joe showed some clips from the series at his presentation in ohio and he begins to weep when he's talking about this as did we all yes yes joe is the father of joe and Catherine have four wonderful children Mm -hmm. brilliant brilliant kids Uh, we've watched them grow up before our eyes it's like (laughs) you're talking now yeah how is that possible you're still a baby right (laughs) anyway uh he takes this very personally We've watched our daughter grow into a, a very successful, accomplished Brilliant, young woman. Wonderful. And funny, entertaining, one of my favorite mm-hmm. people just to hang out with. Mine too. Yeah. So we can see what joy children bring. Yes, they can be infuriating at times. They will try to get away with things. They will tell you what you want to hear instead of what they actually did, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Just as we do to the Lord. Just imagine, you know, your frustration times 8 billion and that's, mm-hmm. that's God. Yeah. Um, but here we've got these precious children who are being released into the country. And this is why Robert F. Kennedy was beginning to weep during his speech yesterday, just talking about the food aspect. But add this to that, that we are facilitating, we, the American taxpayer, at the very least abetting, if not openly aiding Mm -hmm. this. Why was ICE directed by the Department of Homeland Security to weld open those security gates in Arizona to keep the gates literally open? For traffickers to cross the border. If they're not unaccompanied adults, men of military age, 300,000 plus children who've now disappeared into the interior of this country, we don't know. Child trafficking is a more profitable business for illicit crime rings than narcotics or prostitutions or or pornography even. Mm Mm-hmm. And these children are living lives that we would not wish on our worst enemies. We, we've been talking about the, the border crisis for a long, long time. And, and it's another reason you need to download our app because it's one of those things that could get us This is a topic that off. gets you canceled, yeah. But um, if you are on the app, you can search for, I don't know if you would put it under migration or what you might put for the tag mm. for those old can't, PID radios. can't really tag on the app. Um, you can search by speaker and you can look for certain words but oh. it, it, yeah we're not allowed to well no actually we can do it i just have not done it because no, that's okay it, yeah old pid anyway. radio so back right. in the day we've talked about this a lot you yeah. i was talking about this during my daily talk show almost 20 years ago i know in, yes. in columbia i yeah. interviewed um retired union chief for border patrol officers mm-hmm. and he was talking about this back in 2006 so and during the george w bush administration but the, the, when you look at the number of encounters at the border uh, over the past 24 years, you, you see that it really spiked. As soon as Joe Biden took office, it's like the floodgates were open and the people in Central and South America knew it. Yeah, but you know, when you were talking about this and, and when we were talking about it during PID radio days, it was during the Bush administration mm-hmm. and it was less believable to our audience Yeah, because- We've got a Republican, a conservative in the White House. Yep. Well, it doesn't matter. Blue, red, Mm -hmm. they are the same party. Mm -hmm. They've unified long ago Mm -hmm. for ulterior motives that are not in our best interests. Right. Not in the best interests of our children. So the idea of watching Kennedy and Trump unify to protect our children, Mm -hmm. that makes me pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I know there are some are saying, oh, Kennedy's a liberal, he's a liberal. Hey, set that aside. If they're going to unify mm-hmm. over the issue of protecting our children, protecting the next generations, we need more children in this country. We mm-hmm. are not having enough children to even maintain our population, which may be one reason they're bringing 
uh, people in, allowing people in, because you can't grow the economy if you've got a shrinking population. And they're trying to boost the numbers in those blue areas so they have more voters. More voters, but even if they don't vote, because I don't think they really care if they vote, but they're counted in the census. And so when you apportion Mm -hmm. representatives in the House of Representatives, Mm -hmm. if California has grown because you've allowed several million new arrivals in there, whether they're voting or not, Mm -hmm. California gets more more representatives in Congress. Yep. It offsets the people who fled to states like Florida, Texas, and Missouri. Well, I tell you, for now, in the House of Representatives, there are only 435 seats. Right. Seriously, there are only 435 seats. Mm -hmm. The only way that they could expand that and no longer just portion them out, Mm -hmm. if they wanted to expand the number of seats, they'd have to build a new House of Representatives (laughs) chamber. Because it's only got 435 seats. and, And change the Constitution. Oh, well, yeah, but they've been doing that for years. Well, just choosing not to enforce certain things. As uh, Al Gore says, well, you know, it's a living document. Yeah, yeah. So that, uh, that, that is one of the things that we're keeping an eye on. That this report by the Inspector General, again, considering that this is coming from the uh, Biden-Harris mm. Department of Homeland Security, that the IG <laughs> there is uh, openly saying, hey, we've got a serious problem here. These children are missing. That, uh, that must really have galled the uh, the White House. Oh, very this much came so. out, especially the same week as the Democrat uh, convention. Uh, before we go, um, and I think we're probably going to take a, ch- a question from the app, I want to ask you a question. Sure. Biden is now a lame duck president. Mm-hmm. What do you think he will try to do or someone will, do, someone will try to do through him? Because lame duck presidents can get away with a lot of stuff. They can. um, Signing lots and lots of memos and things like that. Well, good question. Um, He'll pardon a bunch of people. Maybe his son. Could be. Could be. I mean, he won't have to worry about the the political fallout um, if he does it after the election. Mm -hmm. The uh, the political fallout would be minimal. because people will be angry about it for a while, but that's by easy. the time the next presidential election rolls around, we'll yeah, all have forgotten. Yeah, just wait till December. It. That's usually when it's done right. the last month. We'll all have forgotten about it. So th- that's one thing. Um, there is something that popped up, and, and thank you, uh, Rover, at uh, the app for pu- putting uh, putting this into uh, our radar here. <laughs> radar, uh, Rover. Uh, 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 I see what you yeah. did there. Um, there is a draft executive order that's been floated by Biden that would... Um, compel states to adopt digital driver's licenses. Well, that's interesting. Biden administration laying the groundwork for wider acceptance of digital identification like driver's licenses you can show on your smartphone instead of actually having to carry the little card with you. There are, I don't know, a handful of states that already do that with Apple Wallet. Yeah, Apple Wallet and a couple of other apps out there. Mm -hmm. Missouri had its own app for it. Now, that app has been withdrawn for unknown, unspecified reasons. I was going to say, reasons. Missouri is not on the list for Apple, so... No, it's not for no. Apple Wallet, but, but uh, Missouri does have a digital driver's license. Yeah, that day is coming when it will all be on your smartphone, I, which means eventually it will all be on a chip. Yep, yep. 13 states out of the 50 mm. already have some kind of mobile driver's license. I was surprised to find Missouri on that list because we tend to be fairly conservative here. Yeah. But I, I, I don't want my driver's license on my phone. If I lose my phone, I don't want somebody having access to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's too much information on there already. Which is another, a good reason to have facial recognition to unlock your phone. Yeah. I yeah. know I've never done that on mine, but I keep thinking I really should because just having the the six number yeah. pen. Yeah, especially if it's something easily guessed, which is yeah. usually what we do. We find something easy to remember and people, hackers, have figured out, okay, it's most likely uh, some combination of these yeah. numbers. So, yeah, anyway, that is uh, the draft order. It would, um, uh, it has not yet been officially published, so it's simply a draft. This was obtained by a couple of news organizations this past week, so that would be something. Mm. Uh, but again, moving us toward a more digital existence, you know, it's, they're working in that direction. Mm. Digital money, digital existence, digital everything. Um, 
It would ostensibly address a growing problem. Government has lost billions of dollars in fraudulent claims to benefit programs using forged identification cards. They spend, they spend billions and billions and billions on foreign wars. Yep. They spend billions and billions to take care of people who have chronic illnesses. And billions to offer free services to people who are not in the country legally. Yeah. Which, it, it, this is the irony. We're spending more per year on... You know, okay, here's, here's WIC, here's, you know, free, free food, here are free services, free health care, way more than it would have cost to finish building yes. that wall. Now, I will say this, that there are some people in genuine situations that are not of their own making. Oh, yeah. I don't have a problem with the Me programs neither. themselves. It's I've just, just have... let's, let's not bring in millions of people to add to that role. To that burden, right? Yeah. Exactly. Especially when it cost benefit analysis. Okay, it was four billion to to finish the wall, or you know, hundred to billion a year to feed mm-hmm. and, and clothe and house. Yeah. And yeah, well, you yeah. know what? We are the OGs. <laughs> yeah, we're the old crabby ze- geezers. Rabbit. Uh, but so, question from the app. Yeah, there's, so there are probably other things that Biden will try. Well, to that, get that was the question, wasn't it? Uh, no, that was not the question. Oh, sorry. Um, it was an observation. A question from DF. That was the initials given mm-hmm. on the uh, on the app. What was the reason that uh, Jesus had uh, to spend three days in the grave? Was it to mock something that happened with the fallen angels needed to be fulfilled to rip the veil? Oh. Can't remember the exact reason. Don't want to discuss this info uh, to others without knowing exactly that. No, so I, I yeah. think it's because of the, uh, that, that whole L and the revivication yeah. ceremony. Um, I think there's, there's a lot, uh, a lot to that. Um, we we talk about the oh ding, no, it's, it's it's Joe. <laughs> I knew it. He always get. How does he do that? <laughs> I don't know. Got my phone on. Do not disturb. Me too. And uh, yet Joe manages to get right through. Um, yeah, it will. Uh, uh, according to the ritual texts, the Rephaim texts mm-hmm. from Ugarit, they that are were summoned only recently discovered in the last forty years. About forty years. Yeah, yeah. these texts summon the Rapayuma or Rephaim to the threshing floor of El, the tabernacle of El, which is to be the summit of Mount Hermon, and it takes them three days to arrive. Now, why that could be that this is something that is a very ancient um, belief. You go back to the uh, Inanna's descent to the, the uh, underworld, mm-hmm. which is a Sumerian myth yep, where she goes three days. Yeah, goes down to the netherworld to try to take control of the great below from her sister, the queen of the underworld, Eresh Kigal, and uh, Eresh Kigal fixes her with the stare of death. Mm, and but hangs she her on a hook. Hangs her on a hook, but three days later, with some help, she gets she gets out. But there are other references to three days. Um, uh, three days of uh, pestilence, the sword of Yahweh, mm. when David was being punished for the sin of, uh, commit, of, of a census. But there's a reference of a prophecy in Hosea, Hosea 6, verse 2. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. But there were also prohibitions on eating sacrificial meat on the third day after it was, uh, it was sacrificed. It had to be burned. Anything eaten on the third day was considered um, a violation of the law. There, there are some who are looking at the idea of the ages. The present age, when, mm-hmm. were the, when is the end of the age? That's what the disciples actually asked him. What are the signs of your coming and of the end of the age? Mm. They knew something. These are references, I believe, to the writings of the, the scenes there in the north mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they wrote about the various ages. And there are those who take the idea that a day is as a thousand years and believe that we are past 2,000 years. Mm-hmm. So The third day is what we were presently in. If the Lord returns soon, it'll be sort of dawn of the third day. Dawn of the third day. The verses I was looking for in Leviticus, Leviticus 7, 18, if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering is eaten on the third day, he who offers it shall not be accepted, neither shall it be credited to him. It is tainted, and he who eats of it shall bear his iniquity. And then Leviticus 19, verses 7 and 8, if it is eaten at all on the third day, it is tainted. It will not be accepted, and everyone who eats it shall bear his iniquity because he has profaned what is holy Mm. to the Lord, and that person shall be cut off from his people. One final thing with regard to the L ceremony, Mm -hmm. 
where he summons the Raphaim to his his uh, temple, to the threshing floor, which is a portal. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they travel one night and then and one day and then another, and the dawn of the third day they arrive in their chariots, that the Lord Himself showed He would arrive, yes. return at dawn of the third day. He didn't need anybody to call Him. True. He came on His own, mm-hmm. and that was after going down to the watchers and saying, "Remember how you wanted to talk to me about something, and I said." Enoch would just deliver my message to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you in person, you're still dead. Yeah. (laughs) But I'm not. Yeah. I'm getting out of here. That's right. On my own. First Peter three, beginning at verse 19. Mm -hmm. So summarizing something to do with some ancient ritual. I mean, we know that in the classical era, Greeks and Romans would have a ritual meal on the third Mm -hmm. day after the death of a, of somebody. Mm -hmm. It was believed that it was on that day that the spirit left the body, which is why Jesus waited four days to call Lazarus out of the tomb. Yes. So there was some belief there that Jesus made clear that uh, it was, He was well and truly dead before he returned. He did not revive in the tomb. Oh, the coolness of the tomb revived him. No, no. He he was well and truly dead. Uh, But there was a very ancient pagan belief that there was something spiritual about that third day. And God, as far back as the time of Moses, said, we don't eat the sacrifice on the third day because that's what the pagans do. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amen. Good question. Thank you, DF. That's a very good question. Well, a conference is coming up, going to be in North Dakota in just a couple of weeks now. Ooh, yeah, Pitchfork and Ho. Pitchfork and Ho gathering, and uh, we'll be there Saturday and Sunday, September 7th and 8th. The event begins on Friday the 6th. It's uh, really a gathering of small farmers and, and homesteaders. You don't need to bring a pitchfork or a hoe nope, nope. with you. If you want to, you could probably get one there. Some wonderful organic food oh, oh my ooh, goodness yeah. some of the pastries that we yeah really, yeah you brought back some of those homemade jellies homemade and jellies yeah. yeah i had not seen choke cherry since my grandmother who was i hadn't from, seen it to, since england yeah my, I, my I mother is from north dakota and they mm. they grow and and make choke cherry jelly choke so cherry. good yeah very very good so uh if this is at the eagles club in valley city north dakota it is uh, going to be a busy weekend in that town. They've got uh, a, a memorial. <laughs> I, I don't want to laugh because I, I don't know the fellow who's being memorialized, but it's a memorial demolition derby. Well, if that's what he asked for, then I, why not? Yeah. So a lot of people are in town. Most of the hotel rooms in that town are already taken up for the weekend. Yep. There are so. some B&Bs, but if you want to go and you don't live in the area, then really you need to sign up now. Yeah. Get your hotel. You can find a link to the Pitchfork and Ho Gathering Facebook page, which is where they've got the latest information. Uh, there's Doug a link Hamp to it. Will be there. Yeah, Doug Hamp. Yes, almost forgot. Doug Hamp will be speaking there as well. So join us on Saturday. I'll be talking about our forthcoming book, The Gates of Hell. Mm-hmm. And on Sunday, I'll be talking about our trip to Israel, the secret history of Israel, how the modern state of Israel came to be. Spoiler, it wasn't the Rothschilds. No. You've been taught to believe that but yeah, that's not that it. is just not the truth sorry candace owens <laughs> that's not who's she, whispering in her ear I, I don't know she's really gone off the deep end i mean yeah, she's, she's gone her. way beyond the rothschild Seriously. she's really into some really yeah. dark she's in blood the libel pray stuff yeah. uh the christmas and branson con oh almost forgot the uh the conference i need to put this oh yeah the schedule. october october the inspiring virtual, women virtual webinar yeah i know i'm looking so forward to that uh, it's really taking a look at overcoming adversity you, you've had some real, we're all challenged in our lives. Mm-hmm. Each one is met with a challenge that the Lord brings into your life or uses in your life to give you some muscle, mm-hmm. give you some spiritual muscle, muscle. And some people, they drown in it. They, they, they just can't take it. And then others take that adversity and they do, they get that spiritual muscle. So this is a whole bunch of ladies talking about how they have overcome. Mm-hmm. Because of the Lord. He gives us the power, the strength to overcome. Vicki Joy Anderson, mm-hmm. Heidi Begley, Tracy Tennant, and I know. Uh, many others. Oh, it's going to be so, so good. So yep. virtual only. You can sign up at hearthewatchmen.com, hearthewatchmen.com. I think it's so ironic. It's all women. It's hearthewatchmen.com. <laughs> but uh, there will be a live event on that Sunday. Again, a virtual mm-hmm. event where you can ask questions of the women involved. So uh, 
do take advantage of that. That'll be uh, coming up the first weekend in October. Yeah, maybe by then I can put eye makeup on. <laughs> My eyes, by the way, are better. They are better. In fact, I'm sitting here in the barn, and the overhead lights are not driving me crazy. You you know how it was God. last yes, Saturday? Yes, yes. I a had cap. to have a mm-hmm. hat on. To shield your and eyes. And I was kind of wishing I had sunglasses on because mm-hmm. it was just so painful. Mm. Um, I actually walked outside this morning, and it's sunny. I didn't wish I'd had a cap on. I just put my hands over my eyes. Yeah. But it's getting better, and you guys are praying for me, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And then the uh, Christmas and Branson Prophecy Conference from Prophecy Watchers, mm-hmm. December 5th through the 8th. That's Thursday through Sunday. Uh, two dozen speakers, and I will be among One them. them. But uh, others include L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, Billy Crone, Ken Johnson, Doug Patrick Hershey. M. Wood, Doug Hershey, Josh Peck, Mondo Gonzalez, <laughs> Brandon Holthouse, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, Terry James, Olivier Melnick. Uh, This is really a wonderful, Mm -hmm. wonderful gathering. Larry Allison, who's uh, just up the road here. He's up Lake of the Ozarks. I know, I know. He's a neighbor. So uh, quite a gathering, typical for a Prophecy Watchers conference. Bob Ulrich really knows how to pull these together and uh, honored to be a part of it. And this will be at a wonderful location too, the the, Chateau uh, Chateau on on the Lake. Thank you. Overlooking Table Rock Lake, beautiful hotel, absolutely gorgeous. So please join us. We've got some friends who've already signed up and uh, hope we see you there as well, December 5th through 8th. And information, registration at BransonChristmasProphecyConference.com or just follow the link from our app. That's the easiest one. That's the easiest one. (laughs) Well, uh, tomorrow morning, Gilbert House Fellowship, uh, we are beginning our study on the book of First Enoch. Enoch, yeah. Enoch, I keep getting complaints. Why do you say Enoch? Well, that's, I'm from Chicago. Yeah, but it is, we're going to be trying that the fourth Sunday or the last Sunday, I should say, of mm-hmm. every month. Sometimes it won't be the fourth. But the last Sunday of every month, we are going to put the, the, the Bible study aside and we're going to start reading in Enoch because there is stuff in there mm-hmm. that is referenced in the Bible, and sometimes right. downright quoted yeah. in the Bible. And we'll, we'll say up front that we are not arguing that that first Enoch should be in the Bible. There no, it are, is in some Bibles, but we're not saying it should be. No, the early church resolved this mm-hmm. under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and it is not in the Bible. There are reasons for it to not be in the Bible. Having said that, there are doctrines that don't appear in any Jewish writing prior to the book of first Enoch, and it would be helpful for us to understand why. Right, and it, uh, I think it gives us some cultural context. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Cultural, also geographic context, yeah. where it was written. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll so be we'll dealing with that tomorrow morning, so uh, don't miss that. Yeah, and then tomorrow night, Ali Siadatan returns to A View Ooh. from the Bunker. We talk about uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, the War of Gog and Magog. Boy, we didn't even talk about Iran today. There's so much going on with that, Ooh, especially yeah. the U.S. assets that are... Oh, we're essentially surrounding the Middle East There's with a, our Navy. Yeah, yeah. So pray for peace in the Middle East. Iran has not yet responded. Israelis are starting to breathe a little easier. I'm not sure that uh, the danger has passed. No, U.S. sources are saying, look, we've scared Iran away. Mm, I don't think so. I, I don't think either. so. I, I pray that that's true, but I, I just don't think so. So anyway, uh, Ali has got some really, really insightful observations about where we are and how this relates to where we are right now so until next time i'm Derek gilbert i'm sharon gilbert and for grace and glory gilbert bye-bye everybody pid radio is produced by gilbert house and released under creative commons attribution non-commercial no derivatives 4.0 international license follow us online twitter at pid radio or the pid radio page at facebook join us each week for our online bible study the gilbert house fellowship online at gilberthouse.org 